The World Series is right around the corner. So for this edition of Strip Poker, I'm here with the beautiful Cloney Gowan to talk about the upcoming series. Thanks for talking with me today, Cloney. No, oh, thank you for coming by. So what have you been doing in the last month or so to get ready for the World Series? Well, I decided not to play poker at all, although I have taught a boot camp for the WPT boot camp, <clears throat> which was last weekend here in Vegas. But um, other than that, um, you know, I played the up-top events on full tilt, and, uh, but haven't played poker at all. I decided to kind of take most of the month off and just kind of be prepared. And I mean, it is, you know, six weeks worth of poker every day. I mean, mm -hmm. you're so sick of poker at the end of the World Series that... Uh, I knew that I needed a break before then so that I can recharge and be pumped up. I mean, I'm ready to play poker now. I mean, I'm looking forward to it, you know, so um, I just, I knew that I needed to do that, though. How many events are you going to play this year? Are you going to try and play as many as possible? Is that the plan? Nope. The plan is that I'm going to wake up and I'm going to ask myself, do I feel like playing poker today? And if I, if I can answer that with a yes, then I'm going to go play. And if I don't, then I won't. Um, I probably will play, you know, probably 18 events somewhere along the way. I'm sure that I'll have about 18 days that I wake up and want to play poker. <laughs> but um, I, I don't have a set schedule of what events I'm going to play and things of that nature. I'll play the first one, obviously, uh, for sure. Uh, but after that, I'm just going to see how I feel. Okay. So for people who are playing the World Series for the first time, you've played it for a few years now, what, what's advice, what advice would you give them? Um, well, if this is their first World Series, you know, I mean, take it seriously. Uh, don't get caught up in the moment because you're sitting there with Dole Brunson and, uh, you know, uh, decide, oh, well, let me be Matt Damon and this be my turn to make my play. <laughs> you know, you're playing the World Series. Be smart. The prize mm -hmm. is at the end of the World Series. It's when you win the thing, not making that one play against. That's not so the time. So you think some, some players get caught up in that? Oh, my God. Gosh. Do people do it to you? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like wa a walking bounty on your head is what it is. <laughs> and, and that's because they forget their gold and they, they decide, well, I'm going to take this moment to make my play, you know. And uh, when in reality, they shouldn't be doing that. They should, um, they should try to win the tournament. And a lot of players get busted out that way, which is good for us. But, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I'd say try not to do that. <laughs> well, you've been known as a cash game player. It's where... You got your start in poker and and grinded out all the time. So, is that going to be a distraction during the series, wanting to get in the side games? Because I know the action's probably going to be pretty juicy with a lot of players in town. Is that going to be a distraction at all? Well, you know, I when when the World Series first, when it was down uh, downtown at mm -hmm. Binion's, um, a lot of the players we came in town because the cash games were good, not to play the tournaments. So it's kind of changed with television. You know, um, the only reason why we all started playing tournaments is because we couldn't get a cash game together because all the other people were in the tournaments. And so then we started playing tournaments on those days as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, uh, then one year I decided that I did a mix, a nice little mix of that. And I didn't do well in the tournaments, but I, overall for that, that month I made money from the cash games. The next year I decided I'm going to win a bracelet this year. I'm going to be completely focused on winning a bracelet this year and not playing cash games. Well, that worked out well for me because I lost, you know, like 150000 that month because I didn't play any cash games to balance it off, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't do well in the tournaments. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, it's been like a mixture. So now my thought is just, you know, I will play cash games. Um, you know, I'll wake up and, and, and I'll decide if I want to play tournaments or cash games. Um, I won't do both. So I won't bust out of a tournament and then go play cash. That that day will be one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, because it's two totally different mindsets. Exactly. I was going to ask, how do yeah. you switch from playing one to the you other? You can't in the same day. Or I can't. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough to switch from tournament tournament strategy to cash game strategy. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, with tournaments, the blinds are increasing. You have to make moves before and things of that nature. With, with cash, you're always the chip leader. You can be the chip leader anytime you want to be the chip leader. And, and you have a, a massive amount of information on your opponents. You've probably logged with a couple of the players hundreds and hundreds of hours with them, so you have more information. Tournaments are a little bit different. You can't really go on your read as much because you are profiling your players and you can get generalized reads. But, it, you know, like in a cash game, it's those individual tells and those mm -hmm. individual reads that really make one decision from the next the best. But in tournaments, it's so quick. 
you know, and the blinds are escalating, you don't ever have like where you're, you can say, okay, I'm 85% sure, but right. it's very rarely in a tournament that you've logged enough hours with an opponent that you can say absolute 100% that you're correct. But in cash games, that happens all the time. You've logged enough hours with them that you can say for certain, I'm, you know, 100% certain. Gotcha. Um, and so going back to the World Series, like you said, television has changed a lot of things. Poker players are coming from all over the world to come and play and try and win a bracelet. For a pro who's played with the best players in the world, is it more difficult to play against some players who are, are so inexperienced? Because I've heard, like, I, I never know what to do because how am I supposed to read someone who doesn't even know the strength of their own hand? Is that a problem for you? It's not a problem. I'd much rather play with an amateur than I would a pro. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, a, with an amateur, you can pretty much play ABC poker. You don't have to do fancy things with an amateur. But, uh, you know, with a pro, you may have to go five, six levels mm -hmm. with them. They know what you, you know. You know what they know. They know that you know what you know. <laughs> right. And I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, try to play with a few pros for an eight hour period, and you'll feel like you have just, you know, built a house. I mean, it's exa mental exhaustion is everything. And so, you know, playing with amateurs is a lot easier. You play ABC poker with them. I mean, there's not, there's not a lot of fancy, fancy things to do with amateurs, but with pros, harder, much harder. So, what do you think the trick is to outlasting these huge fields? I don't know. Let's ask Helma. <laughs> he seems to do it quite well. Hey, have you seen him on the Milwaukee's Best Can yet? I haven't seen him. Uh, it's really funny, and he has the quotes like, I can dodge bullets, print it on the can, and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good for poker, right? Right. I think Helmut's one of the things he's a, he's probably one of the best readers in the game. Mm -hmm. He's able to profile people very, very quickly. Um, you know, he, uh, he's able to take, uh, make his opponent emotional, mm -hmm. which is something that I don't. I play so many cash games that I don't want to piss anybody off at the table. I want them to come back and play with me all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. But in tournaments, maybe there is something about that intimidation of that amateur player. And so it gets that amateur player playing bad at him. Mm -hmm. And because he's so capable of reading his opponent that he gets them emotional. And when a player is emotional, they will give off more tells. Um, I think he's a master at being able to do that. Um, um, so maybe this year, maybe I'll th throw in some chairs and stuff. Maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. That would be so funny to see little Cloney Gowan throwing a chair across the room. I probably won't ever yeah. do that. That's probably not my not. personality, but eh, maybe. Maybe I'll throw it over Phil's head. <laughs> Just kidding, Phil. What's, what's the event that you're looking forward to the most? Um... Hmm. I guess just the main, the main event. event. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we all look forward to the main event. Mm -hmm. And um, not, not any other than, I mean, yeah. You know, they're all the same. You can all wear a bracelet with any of them, so. Yeah. Definitely. What do you think about the final table being moved to November? I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't it. like it at all. Uh, it's, you know, it's turn, you know, what was originally supposed to be about you know, the best players in the world, and all of a sudden, you know, it's going to be six months later in that time period, these players are going to improve that have made that final table. It's a big disadvantage. Uh, you know, there's no training to make the World Series final table. Right. Um, it's ridiculous that we've allowed this to happen. Do you think it's just about about the money? Because some players, the, the ones who are for it, say that it's good for poker because they're making it um, a, a big deal and, and people are going to get the media attention that they deserve. They're going to get the immediate attention without anyway. it being six months away. Mm -hmm. If you make that final table, you're going to be very famous. Um, you don't need the extra sponsor dollars and all that. It's all for the benefit of the casinos, which, hey, I'm okay with them making a dollar. But, um, mm -hmm. you, know, um, I, you know, there is a players committee for a reason, and I can assure you I don't believe that the players committee um, all wanted this to happen. That's, it's a huge disadvantage. Your, play, your players can't be able to improve for six months, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for having me, and good luck in the series. Thank you. I want you to win that first bracelet so we can do this again. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Chris, you're not with Clooney Gowan for Strip Poker.